Hi all. I'd like to do a little series on how not to queen past pawns. I seem unfortunately to be getting quite good at this particular skill and it's costing me quite a few rating points. From a kind of um, thinking perspective, you know, usually I, I'm, I'm more interested in the middle game and I think, um, you know, m maybe this is a bad symptom for when I do reach end games, especially after, you know, long sessions of play and you're kind of tired towards the end of the game and you don't really consider you know that the increasing value of the past pawns and this is from from last night's game in the London League um, I, I was you know uh, quite tired for this game like it was like an hour and a half to get there I was 25 minutes late but um, I had a great position during the game and it got into a seemingly you know very promising end game position and my king at the moment, it's blockading my opponent's past d pawn. So that d pawn's under lock and key. So I move my king to e5 here. And my opponent commits um, a pawn structure move, a pawn structure change. He didn't need to. According to Ribka, he could have just kept these pawns where they are. And it's apparently dead equal at 0.00. .00. If he had just done like rook d2, uh, this, this is uh, Ribka's suggestions king d6, just rook e2. There's nothing much going on here, except perhaps now h5. It's giving h5, but um, but what he did was actually in this position he played actually h3, and apparently this this is now getting to be quite good for Black after h5, which is what I played to stop g4. So he's got no real pass pawn potential, but you know have have I? I've got this pass pawn here, but um. You know how how will it go to e1? Is this considered to be a pass pawn? Obviously not, because you know there's um, his his pawn there, his king's there. But um, if we were to think dynamically, um, you know maybe we should consider that this is a potential pass pawn if you could remove this um, blockade of the h3 pawn, and this is potentially a pass pawn if you can remove this blockader. Um, so bear with me why that's important. Uh, thinking even at this stage, may maybe to consider that you know that potentially there are two dangerous pass pawns, because if there are two potential pass pawns here, then it's difficult for a, a king, for example, to defend against both coming down the board. Um, it will be you know a much greater task than just the king blocking my e4 pawn. So anyway, bear that in mind. After rook d2, I played h4. So that pawn is actually one step closer now to a nice destination score of becoming queen. He plays g4, and I thought this was going to be great for me. I didn't expect um, his re uh, a reply coming up, though. I played a check, and I thought, I'll get this pawn one square closer to becoming a queen. So the situation has now changed, hasn't it? Because, you know, that's one closer, and that's one closer to so these two... Um, nice destination squares but he surprised me with rook g2 and all of a sudden I'm a bit annoyed by something here that first thing I missed this move I, I was expecting just a passive retreat and then I could just play bishop e4 with a seemingly completely winning position so this was my my dream I just thought this was it and it was like less than five minutes each I thought um, what an annoying move that he's played here rook g2 um, but uh, let's get back into this mindset here the end game is all about past pawns, so this is a kind of mini game of chess in itself with a different goal. How do you queen your past pawns? So here are two candidate past pawns, and here is a third. Um, now in this position, I took his rook, which again, you know, it seems to be a correct move, but for the wrong reasons. I had the wrong reasons here. King takes g2. Now let's go back to this dynamic perspective I had spoken about earlier. This is a potential queener if it wasn't blocked by this pawn. This is obviously a potential queener if this king couldn't come, you know, to, to, to stop it, or, you know, like this, or to, or to f2 once the pawn moves one square, coming to f2. And it's here I, I played quite a, a sad blunder. Um... I, I played the move bishop e4 check and I managed to completely mess up the position somehow and I don't really have the, the complete move score because it was in a time scramble but um, but 
basically, um, his his pawns became very dangerous, and he managed to actually sack his bishop for this pawn, and one of his pawns was unstoppable to become a queen. Uh, so that was the tragic um, story, which was um, in this time scramble. But both of us weren't recording our moves. But um, let's have a look at this position. There's actually a winning move here, um, which if you took account of the di dynamics of this pawn uh, becoming a pass pawn, maybe you can spot it. So um, I'll get rid of the arrows and um, just to be less distracting in these colours. So can you spot a great move here for black? I'll give you five seconds starting from now. Okay, it's obvious for me now, but uh, especially it's obvious when you look with an engine after, but bishop takes g4. Look at this. Bishop takes g4, so it unblocks the h-pawn, showing that this pawn really has <clears throat> that lust to get to the h1 square. So if hg, now h3 check, and the king can't stop both of these guys simultaneously. So say it takes, then e2. And this bishop is also useless. It can't stop the pawn going to e1. There's no bishop c4, and that's useless anyway. And uh, this pawn is is not going anywhere quick. So that would be would have been it. If um, king f1, then just h2. So it's, it's just a simple win with these two passed pawns causing a lot of damage. In the game, though, it was these two pawns which caused a lot of damage for me. So that's kind of a tragic ending. Um, I was thinking, oh, do I really want to play um, any more over the ball chess anytime soon after this game? Because I reached these, these end games and I just, I don't know, I seem to be somewhere else with some sort of um, middle game thinking. But when it gets to the end game, I think consideration of potential past pawns is very important. Earlier in the game, actually, there was also an interesting... Um, episode which which was uh, to do with this pawn which maybe let's have a look at that as well um, basically I, I was comfortable after this bishop f5 I was thinking he's quite passive here and I didn't see anything during the game but there was, there was another great resource exposed by Ribka which uh, but uh, it's uh, bishop d3 so these pawns do have a loss to expand as well this one's come to b1 so if this takes rook takes b3, it's going to be difficult for black, especially if he's like defending um, d3. You know, just rook c3, b3, and then rook c2. This this pawn is going to be uh, very dangerous to stop. And also, my king can just munch his pawn. So this bishop d3. Let's follow that up accurately though. Rook e3. And the point is here. Not bishop takes c2. Apparently that's that's only um, drawing. Or actually, white could end up better after being a bishop up because these pawns can be stopped. But there's an even stronger idea of e4, and the idea here is basically to queen this pawn with an exchange sack. Rook takes c2. So say um, say g4. Rook takes c2, and this pawn really wants to get to b1. So bishop takes. Bishop takes. How is white stopping this pawn getting to b1? It's quite tricky. In fact, um, this is winning for black as well. So, in the same game, there seems to be different um, past pawn examples because I had a lot of pressure during the game in, in the end game, and the more active king, more aggressive king. Um, so that that was the less obvious of the two um, winning positions I had. It was where I had bishop d3 here. So in the game, we we got um, this other position. Where again, if, if we look at this dynamically, um, these two are potential queeners. But so uh, you just have to think about removing the blockade and, and making sure that the defensive piece, the rook and the king in particular, can't handle both. So this h4 apparently, you know, it was it was a good move. Um, G h by the way, check. And now you know this pawn is um, you know less able to be defended by the king. So e3. So rook d1, now bishop g4, this is very difficult. Because now my king is very useful. And this bishop is also stopping his pawn. Uh, so 
this kind of continuation is not great for white. So say um, d7 here. Actually, my, my king being very aggressive, the, this, this is also another interesting balance between pass pawns and king activity. So rook h2 here threatens mate. And um, there's nothing much he can do about it except um, temporarily stave it off with rook takes e3. And after king takes, he does queen, but then um, he gets mated. Um, please leave any comments on YouTube. Thanks very much.